We mentioned briefly back in one of the earlier videos about the types of properties that surfaces can have that there were two main types of surfaces or two main types of materials in the world. These materials are conductors or insulators or if you prefer conductors and dielectrics or if you prefer metals and dielectrics or if you prefer metals and non-metals. Unfortunately neither of these ways of stacking the words actually divide up all materials completely correctly and in the real world there is something of a gradation. You'd also get things like semiconductors which have their own specific physical properties that are kind of distinct. However from a visuals point of view and from the point of view of doing computer graphics rendering using conductors and insulators as our two main material types is the easiest way to go. Now if you're not familiar you may ask you know is this similar to electrical conductivity right? You've got some things that conduct electricity like metals commonly and you have things that insulate electrical current like rubber. The answer simply is yes. This is exactly the same deal. And the reason why this difference is important is because of course we're talking about how these materials interact with light. Light of course is made up of photons and photons are the carriers of the electromagnetic force. As such broadly or very roughly speaking in the same way that different materials interact in inverted commas with electricity differently they also interact with light differently. All of the details of that being you know the specific electrical atomic properties of the material and quantum mechanics and yada 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 lots of detail that doesn't matter. So what does matter about these two differences? Well it's going to be the way that they appear visually. For instance insulators or dielectrics. These are things like plastic or wood or rubber or paper or cardboard or fabric or glass or vinyl. Insulator materials generally have low indices of refraction. Of course remember the good old refraction index here that we have for things. Commonly of course we tend to think of refraction in terms of transparent materials in a true physics point of view and how when light goes through a transparent material we see it get bent so you know the straw in a glass of water looks bent all of that sort of stuff but from a true real world point of view actually all materials refract light. It just so happens that if the material is what we think of as being opaque or not transparent the light that is refracted through it is simply absorbed. It never makes it out the other side. But it's this refraction index of materials that controls their absorption and their reflection, be that the specular reflection and or the diffuse reflection. And this leads to different looks, such as commonly here. We see something that would be an insulator or dielectric material like a plastic or a vinyl or something. We generally see that these have white highlights. That is to say that the reflection, the specular reflection of the material has the colour of the light falling on the surface whereas the diffuse reflection of the material takes on the colour of the surface itself. Just as we spoke about in diffuse the other wavelengths of light are absorbed or refracted and only the one colour is reflected or mix of colours is reflected. If you look at things like rubber or like wood and many plastics you will see that they have essentially a white specular reflection. However there is sort of a gradient and as you work your way through to some other plastics you will find that the specular starts to take on some of the colour of the diffuse. This in reality is basically linked to the IOR of that material and you start to get the tinted reflection which of course we spoke about in the whole Fresnel section. As you see this starts to give us something that still looks plasticky but it's clearly a different type of plastic. When we're getting into this coloured reflection on a dielectric we're moving more towards vinyls rather than hard plastics. And again you see the coloration or the tinting of that reflection 
based on the Fresnel angle there, or the incidence angle, I should say, and the Fresnel effect. Now, once you get into conductors, we find that that changes even more, and you start to get this very strong reflective effect that is heavily tinted. The thing about conductors is that technically they have no diffuse reflection at all, absolutely zero. That's true for metals, it's true for water. Obviously, we think of them as having colour, but all of that colour is picked up purely in the specular reflection. They do not have diffuse. They have a diffuse of zero, or rather they have a diffuse colour of black. In some places, you will see that people refer to metals or conductors as not having diffuse, but having albedo. But what you can see in the reflectance properties of conductors is this very different sense of colour. It's not merely a tinted specular reflection. It is indeed a full colour specular reflection. And of course, the Fresnel effect is much reduced. Metals will have very high indices of refraction. But again, in conductors as a whole, there is a gradation. Water has a much lower index of refraction, much more similar to glass, whereas gold, chrome, steel, they have very high indices of refraction. But this coloration that they pick up really is the colour of the specular reflection, which is why when you want something like chrome steel, what you're actually choosing is a white reflection. Basically, a white reflection being an untinted or a colourless reflection like this. And really, for the most part, this is all that it comes down to for our own work here. The principal difference that we're going to see between insulators and conductors, or conductors and dielectrics, is really in their reflectance properties, how their Fresnel effect behaves, and how the coloration of their specular reflection behaves. As for how it is that we play with this, we have a few different options in our materials here, such as in our multifunctional material here, the details of which we'll look at later. You'll see that we have this metallic spinner that takes us between total dielectric at zero and total metallic, giving us an effect that looks like this, very plasticky, and of course, total metal at 100%. And of course, allowing us to do these gradations of, you know, mostly metal, perhaps, or largely dielectric-ish, like this. We also, of course, have specific materials, like conductor. Ever wonder why conductor is called conductor? Well, because it's for conducting surfaces, or at least a subset of them, principally metals. No transparency means you're not going to get very good water out of this shader. Of course, we also have specific dielectric shader, Again, this is for specific dielectric types, namely transparent materials, glass-like materials. Can you do water and liquids with this? Yes, you can. I should point out, water is something of a special case. It is technically a conductor. It has no diffuse reflection. But if you look at its specular reflection, you will see that it is mostly white. That is, the colour of the light that hits it is the colour that you see in the reflection, but that's governed by the angle of view, again, with Fresnel effect, and of course, not forgetting the balance of the transparency. Then, of course, we also have other shaders like skin, which is designed for human skin, which in terms of its surface properties is broadly dielectric and certainly behaves so for the most part in terms of its reflectance. Though, because it's subsurface scattering, and certain wavelengths are more absorbed than others, you can sometimes get a bit of a tint going into the reflection. And then we have others like car paint, where you have the ability to have a metallic paint, which of course behaves like a conductor, but you also have this clear coat, which is like a varnish or a lacquer, which is more plasticky, and that behaves like a dielectric. And so this surface gives us something that is not actually halfway between a conductor and a dielectric, rather it gives us something that has both types of material, because the paint is two different materials. There's a metallic layer and there's a dielectric layer. And this is the last thing that's important to remember when you are dividing up your materials and asking yourself, 
is this kind of surface I'm creating a insulator or a conductor is to think purely about what it is that the light is bouncing off of. In the case of something like this, where we've got a metallic car paint, we've actually got both. We've got a clear coat dielectric layer, but that's partially transparent, which allows us to see the metallic layer underneath. However, in other circumstances, we only care about the actual top layer that we can see. So if you've got something made out of steel that has been painted, then the metal is completely covered up, so no light ever hits it. The paint is dielectric, we treat it as a dielectric surface. If you've got something like a cheap Christmas bauble that's actually made out of plastic, but it's got a very thin layer of foil over it, then the foil is metallic, it completely masks the plastic, and we treat it as a conductor. And then on other objects, we might actually have a mix in the surface itself. So let's say that you've got a rusted steel surface. The clean steely parts would be metallic, whilst the rust would be dielectric. Or perhaps it's a flaky paint surface or something of that nature. Because of all this, when starting to surface your objects, I usually find this the best place to start to ask yourself, right, what is the surface I'm starting with here? Am I starting with a conductor or am I starting with an insulator? Straight away, that will begin to narrow down the kinds of material shader that you want to use for that given surface. And in the case of surfaces such as, you know, metal that has, you know, chunks of mud caked on it, then you would want to go looking for a surface that allows you to mix both properties in a single material. Or you would want to set up different materials and then mix them together based on some sort of textual procedural whatnot in your nodal surface. So there we go. These are the basic ideas of conductors and insulators or conductors and dielectrics or whatever names you want to give them. Generally, when reviewing our surfaces to start work on them, it's most helpful to divide them up into these two categories and begin working from there. And you will, of course, see us doing that as we work through some of the examples later in this training.